In the heart of a landlocked country, an extraordinary story of love, family, and a dream fulfilled unfolded, casting a ray of hope and inspiration that would resonate far beyond borders. Grace Banda and her husband, Joshua, shared a love that had endured for half a century and to commemorate their remarkable journey together. Their children orchestrated a grand surprise that would take them to the country they had long yearned to visit, the United States of America. For Grace and Joshua Banda, the idea of traveling beyond the confines of their homeland was a privilege that had remained elusive for decades. As residents of Zambia, the prospect of exploring foreign shores had always seemed distant. However, their children recognized the significance of their parents' 50th wedding anniversary and saw it as an opportunity to turn this long-held aspiration into a reality. Pooling their resources and love, the couple's four children coordinated a meaningful surprise. With the expenses meticulously planned and borne by the children, Grace and Joshua were presented with an anniversary gift that transcended material offerings. With their children and grandchildren in tow, the Banda set off to the airport, the air tinged with electric energy that mirrored their collective excitement. As the plane wheels left the tarmac, the journey to Uncle Sam's land had officially begun. The skies held promises of new experiences and memories waiting to be made, and the couple's hearts brimmed with anticipation for what lay ahead. Upon arriving in America, their plane touched down in Florida, a gateway to their American adventure. With the aid of a guide, their stay was carefully curated to ensure a memorable experience. Their first day was spent luxuriating in the comfort of a hotel, the beginning of a journey filled with moments of wonder and joy. As evening descended, a towering cake took center stage, symbolizing their enduring love and the years they had shared. The celebration of their golden anniversary was a testament to the strength of their bond. Family, love, and gratitude converged as generations gathered around the cake, a sweet reflection of the unity and joy that defined the Bandas' journey. The adventure didn't stop there. The Bandas embarked on a day of thrilling excitement at an amusement park. The roller coasters, with their heart-pounding drops and exhilarating twists, mirrored the exhilaration that defined their journey. By the end of the day, their spirits were invigorated, and their bodies were weary from the adrenaline-filled experiences. The Bandus returned to their lodgings, their hearts brimming with gratitude for the day's adventures and the love surrounding them. The next day, they went to the pristine beach of Florida. The Banda family descended upon the golden sands of Florida's coastline, with the sea breeze brushing against their skin and the waves crashing in rhythmic harmony. The allure of the beach, with its vast expanse of water meeting the horizon, was irresistible. Grace, a grandmother who had embarked on this adventure with the heart of a child, exchanged her attire for swimwear, her spirit a reflection of the boundless enthusiasm that surrounded her. As the younger generations reveled in the waves, Grace joined them with unbridled glee. Together, they waded belly-deep into the water, their shared laughter harmonizing with the rhythm of the ocean. A symphony of joy unfolded with each splash and each burst of laughter. Grace's heart swelled as she played with her beloved grandchildren, their shared moments forming the foundation of a cherished memory. In an instant, the carefree laughter gave way to a cry that pierced the air. Once the embodiment of joy, Grace was now the center of a drama beyond imagination. The shark's gnash into her feet reverberated through the family, a stark reminder of the delicate balance between humans and the wild. Initially unsure of the seriousness of the situation, her grandchildren rushed towards her. Their innocent faces contorted with concern as they witnessed the distress etched on Grace's features. Their instincts kicked in and they rallied to support their beloved grandmother. With bravery beyond their years, some of the grandchildren attempted to pull Grace from the water while others scrambled to assess the situation. Together with a collective strength fueled by love, they confronted the shark. Grace was freed from its grip. Blood flowed from the bites, a testament to the unexpected visceral encounter. Grace's leg, despite the bites, was miraculously intact. As they emerged from the water, their faces were etched with relief, exhaustion, and pride. With Grace's safety on their minds, the family's immediate response was swift and decisive. The well-being of their matriarch was their top priority, and the beach's other occupants were swiftly evacuated from the water to prevent further harm. 
The vacation atmosphere was abruptly transformed into an atmosphere of vigilance and concern. The family's initial plans were placed on hold after the incident. Instead of an immediate return to their beloved Zambia, they chose to stay, compelled by the necessity of ensuring Grace received the medical care she needed. Days turned into weeks as Grace underwent medical treatment and her family stood by her side, unwavering in their support. Their vacation may have been disrupted, but the bond that held them together remained unbreakable. The fear that gripped them was transformed into determination, a resolve to overcome the obstacles that had been unexpectedly placed in their path. As Grace's strength slowly returned and her ability to walk improved, the family began to see a glimmer of hope on the horizon. A sense of assurance gradually replaced the shadow of uncertainty that had lingered were moving in the right direction. The decision to return to Zambia, their homeland, became more feasible as they weighed the allure of their homeland's familiar comforts against the uncertainty that had arisen from the incident. Before departing from the hospital, Grace received counseling to address the emotional aftermath of the traumatic experience. The weight of the encounter had left its mark, and the guidance she received was a crucial step towards healing both physically and emotionally. With the support of her family and the guidance of professionals, Grace faced her trauma head-on, emerging from the experience stronger and more resilient than before. Randall had always been a daring soul seeking out the most exhilarating adventures. The thrill of scaling mountains, gliding through the air, and even conquering the world's highest peak had all been accomplished. However, now he yearned for the heart-pounding excitement of undersea exploration. After much research, Randall chose Mossel Bay, a place renowned for its vast population of great white sharks, to try his hand at shark cage diving. The idea of being submerged in a steel cage, teetering precariously on the ocean surface while the colossal predator swam around, both fascinated and terrified him. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience that could go one of two ways, an unforgettable thrill or a terrifying disaster. The journey to Mossel Bay was long, but when Randall arrived, he was struck by its immense beauty. The cerulean waters of the ocean shimmered under the sun's rays. The coastline was a picturesque panorama of rocky cliffs and sandy beaches. The tranquil town was small, but it was clear that this place held great power, with the possibility of danger lurking just below the water's surface. Randall's excitement grew as he boarded the boat and set out towards the diving location. The cage was ready and waiting for him, and he couldn't wait to be lowered into the water. As the cage sank into the depths of the ocean, Randall's anticipation turned to fear. The water was murky, and he couldn't see far beyond the steel cage. The silence was deafening, and the only sound was the rhythmic breathing of the diving crew. Suddenly, a group of great white sharks began to circle the cage, their teeth glistening in the murky water as they attacked the steel pegs. Randall could feel his heart pounding in his chest as he watched them, wondering if the cage could withstand their attack. But as the sharks continued to circle, the cage remained sturdy, and Randall felt confident that nothing bad could happen. As the minutes ticked by, the tension grew palpable as the sharks kept circling the cage, their razor-sharp teeth bared in a menacing display. Randall and the crew felt a sense of relief when the sharks eventually stopped attacking the cage, only for their relief to quickly turn to confusion as they suddenly disappeared without a trace. In the murky waters, a thick layer of foam and bubbles made it difficult to see anything. But in the depths, Randall caught a glimpse of something that made his heart race with fear. A massive figure was moving towards the cage with deadly precision. It was coming fast, and there was nowhere to hide. As it approached, the figure became clearer, revealing itself to be a colossal great white shark. Its massive body dwarfed all other sharks they had seen before. Its scarred sides bore the evidence of countless battles, and its cold, dead eyes were fixed on the steel cage with an unerring focus. The crew and Randall watched in terror as the shark kept circling the cage, getting closer and closer with each pass. The atmosphere was thick with fear, 
as they waited for what would happen next. The suspenseful silence was shattered when the shark disappeared suddenly into the depths of the ocean, leaving them all gasping for air. With the sudden appearance of the colossal great white shark, the crew of the diving expedition was thrown into a frenzy of fear and panic. They knew that they had to act quickly to save Randall's life. Without hesitation, they pulled on the rope that would lift the steel cage back to the surface. As they hauled it up, Randall could feel his heart pounding in his chest, and his body was shaking with fear. Just as he was about to breathe a sigh of relief, thinking he had made it out alive, the bottom of the cage was struck by a massive force. It felt like a powerful blow from a sledgehammer, and Randall was thrown off balance, his body jerking wildly in the water. He knew that something terrible was happening, and he could feel his fear growing with each passing moment. The sound of the impact was deafening, and Randall could feel his ears ringing. The water around him churned and frothed, and he knew that something was trying to break through the cage. His mind raced as he tried to imagine what kind of monster was capable of such a feat of strength. Randall's mind raced as he frantically scanned the murky waters, desperate to identify the source of the massive collision that had sent him hurtling out of the cage. Dread filled his heart as he suddenly realized that the colossal great white shark they had seen earlier was the culprit. Before he could even think of a way to defend himself, the beast launched itself like a torpedo, its razor-sharp teeth glistening in the water. In one swift and bone-chilling moment, the shark sunk its jaws into Randall's upper torso, tearing it away from his body with a violent snap. The sensation of excruciating pain mixed with utter terror as Randall felt his life slipping away in the jaws of the monstrous predator. The world around Randall seemed to vanish in an instant as he found himself trapped inside the jaws of the great white shark. The darkness was absolute, and the only sound he could hear was the deafening crunch of the shark's razor-sharp teeth slicing through his flesh and bones. The pain was indescribable, as if every inch of his body was being ripped apart by a thousand knives. His ribs were crushed under the pressure of the shark's jaws, and he knew in that moment that he was doomed. As the shark clenched its massive jaws on Randall's body, his lifeless form hung limply in the water, at the mercy of the animal's frenzied movements. With each violent thrash, the water churned with an ominous blend of swirling crimson and murky green. The shark's razor-sharp teeth shredded Randall's flesh, creating a gory, macabre display in the water. The predator's movements were so powerful that it dragged Randall's mangled remains down into the dark, abyssal depths of the ocean, far from the safety of the surface. It was a gruesome and unsettling sight, a grim reminder of the dangers that lurked beneath the waves. The attack was so sudden that the diving crew was not able to react accordingly. Randall's body was never found, and the story of the attack sent fear and terror to the diving community. It was a reminder that nature was unforgiving, and even the bravest and most experienced of thrill-seekers were not immune to its dangers. The golden rays of the Florida sun painted the beach with hues of warmth as Roger Hughes, a 34-year-old surfer, embarked on what would soon become a fateful day. Eager to savor the early morning waves, he joined his friend Wesley for a day of camaraderie and blissful surfing. The duo ventured into the water, reveling in the cool embrace of the ocean. With each wave, they danced upon their surfboards, the thrill of the sea coursing through their veins. Roger and Wesley took a break from the waves as the morning unfolded. Returning to the shore, they sought refuge under a tent, the canvas providing a sheltered haven from the gradually intensifying sunlight. They indulged in hot coffee from a nearby beach restaurant in the company of good conversation. The rhythmic symphony of crashing waves provided a soothing backdrop to their leisurely interlude. After a rejuvenating break, Roger, ready for more, returned to his surfboard. 
Little did he know that the ensuing moments would etch an unexpected chapter into the tapestry of his surfing adventures. Now infused with unpredictability, the waves beckoned him to resume his aquatic dance. As Roger navigated the waters, his surfboard slicing through the surf, a sudden jolt disrupted the familiar rhythm. In an unforeseen turn of events, he found himself plunging into the water, his body contorted in a struggle against an unseen force. The serenity of the ocean gave way to a moment of chaos. In the blink of an eye, Roger felt a sharp bite, an excruciating pain coursing through his face. The startling reality unfolded. He was under attack by a bull shark. In the face of this challenging encounter, Roger's instincts kicked in. With remarkable agility, he maneuvered to minimize the impact, narrowly escaping what could have been a fatal bite. The bull shark's jaws, designed for relentless precision, left Roger with a wound on his face. The taste of salt water mingled with the metallic tang of blood as he fought to regain control. Amid the struggle, he recognized the gravity of the situation. He had narrowly escaped a life-threatening encounter with one of the ocean's most formidable predators. Fortune favored Roger that day. Despite the harrowing attack, he found himself in relatively shallow waters. The shore, a beacon of safety, was within reach. Ignoring the pain pulsating from his wound, Roger propelled himself towards the safety of the beach. As he emerged from the water, adrenaline coursing through his veins, the onlookers witnessed a surfer marked by resilience. Blood oozed from the wound on his face, a testament to the ordeal he had just faced. Roger's friend Wesley, who had been watching from the shore, rushed to his aid. The gravity of the situation struck them both. A serene day of surfing had given way to a life-altering event. Now aware of the shark encounter, the beachgoers mobilized to assist Roger. Emergency responders were summoned, their swift arrival punctuating the situation's urgency. Roger, though battered and bleeding, was met with a wave of compassion from the paramedics. He was quickly transported to a medical facility for immediate attention. Roger was swiftly taken to a hospital equipped to handle trauma cases. The medical team, familiar with the challenges posed by shark bites, embarked on treating his injuries. It took about 20 stitches to meticulously close the wound on his right cheek, a tangible testament to the ferocity of the shark's attack. The marks at the bottom of the left side of his face, left by the shark's teeth, served as a visceral reminder of the unpredictable forces that governed the ocean. The beach, once a haven for sunbathers and surfers, now bore witness to the aftermath of a shark encounter. News of the incident spread, prompting other surfers and swimmers to report shark activity. In a collective response to the potential danger, the beach was swiftly evacuated, leaving an eerie emptiness mirrored by the sudden disruption of a peaceful day. In the aftermath of the incident, Roger's ordeal became a subject of public attention. News outlets sought to capture the first-hand account of the surfer who had stared into the jaws of a bull shark. In an interview with a news site, Roger reflected on the scariest experience of his life. He described the fear that gripped him as the bull shark attacked, its teeth sinking into his flesh. Despite the terror, Roger displayed a resilience shaped by past challenges. Remarkably, Roger's love for surfing endured, undeterred by the traumatic encounter with the bull shark. The incident, though leaving physical and emotional scars, did not extinguish the flame of passion that burned within him. In defiance of the fear that gripped him during those chaotic moments in the water, Roger expressed his unwavering determination to return to the waves. When asked about his plans for surfing, Roger affirmed his commitment to the sport he cherished. He declared that the incident had not diminished his love for surfing, emphasizing that nothing made him feel better than riding the waves. Despite the shadow cast by the bull shark's attack, Roger's resilient spirit shone through as he declared his intention to return to his surfboard. Azure Bay, nestled on the eastern coast, was a picturesque haven. Golden sands, turquoise waters, and a town rich in tales of sailors and treasures set the backdrop for the Thompson family's summer vacation in 1998. The family, David Thompson, a marine biologist, his wife Clara, a schoolteacher and their children, 16-year-old Emily and 8-year-old Max, were eager to explore. On their third day, they decided to rent a boat and venture into the deeper waters of the bay. 
David shared captivating stories about the diverse marine life that inhabited these waters, but he also cautioned them about the occasional sightings of sharks in the area. By noon, they anchored near a vibrant coral reef. As the family snorkeled, Emily, drawn by the allure of the deep, swam farther from the boat. The underwater world was mesmerizing. Colorful corals, darting fish, and the play of light through the water. But this beauty was soon overshadowed by a looming threat. A shadow passed over Emily, and she froze. Circling her were multiple sleek gray forms, sharks. The typically serene inhabitants of Azure Bay appeared unusually agitated. Recalling her father's advice, Emily made an effort to stay composed, refraining from sudden movements. Nevertheless, the sharks continued to grow bolder, inching closer. On the boat, Max's scream alerted the others. David scanned the waters, his heart sinking as he spotted the sharks around Emily. Clara clutched Max, her face pale, watching the scene unfold with dread. Emily, trying to control her rising panic, remembered a documentary she'd watched with her father. She began to slowly and deliberately tread water, making herself appear larger, hoping to deter the curious sharks. But one, larger than the rest, began to approach her directly, its intent clear. David, without hesitation, dove into the water, swimming with powerful strokes towards his daughter. David kept Emily close to him, making sure they presented themselves as a single, larger entity in the water. Sharks are more likely to be cautious when approaching larger prey. David also maintained unbroken eye contact with any sharks in the vicinity, signaling to them that he was fully aware of their presence. In response, the large shark, momentarily distracted, veered off course, although the others continued circling. The sun's rays, filtering through the water, created a surreal atmosphere as father and daughter found themselves in a standoff with the pack of sharks. Every movement, every breath was crucial. The tension in the water was palpable. David remembered a technique he'd learned during his marine studies as he tried to form a plan. He began to splash and create commotion, drawing the sharks' attention to him and away from Emily. The gamble was risky, but it was their best chance. Emily seized the opportunity, swimming with all her might towards the boat. Clara, seeing her approach, reached out, pulling her aboard. But David was still in the water, leading the sharks away. The family's ordeal was far from over. And as the boat's engine roared to life, the true test of their courage and unity was just beginning. As Emily struggled onto the boat, gasping for breath, Clara enveloped her in a tight, tearful embrace. Max clung to his sister's side, his young eyes filled with a blend of fear and relief. However, their reunion was fleeting, as David remained in the water, intentionally drawing the attention of the sharks with his diversionary tactics. The boat's engine roared to life as Clara steered it closer to David, trying to create a barrier between him and the sharks. The large shark, seemingly the leader, was relentless, tailing David with a predatory focus. The azure waters of the bay, usually a symbol of tranquility, now churned with tension and danger. Using his knowledge of marine behavior, David dove deeper, then suddenly changed direction, trying to confuse the predators. He reached into his pocket, pulling out a small device he always carried, a sonic repeller. Designed to emit frequencies unpleasant to sharks, it was his last hope. Upon activating the device, a piercing, high-pitched sound resonated through the water. The sharks, disoriented by the unexpected noise, started to scatter in different directions. Seizing the moment, David swam upwards, breaking the surface and gasping for air. Clara, with Max's help, extended an oar towards him. Grasping it firmly, David was pulled aboard, exhausted but alive. The family huddled together, the boat speeding back to the safety of the shore. The azure horizon, which had promised a day of adventure and exploration, now bore witness to their harrowing ordeal. Back on the sandy shores of Azure Bay, the Thompsons were met with a crowd of locals and tourists, having been alerted by the flare David had fired earlier. The local lifeguard team and some fishermen approached, offering blankets and warm drinks. The family's vacation had taken an unexpected turn, but it also brought them closer than ever. They realized the strength of their bond and the lengths they would go to protect one another. As their vacation came to an end, the Thompsons left Azure Bay with mixed emotions. The beauty of the place was undeniable, but the memories of that fateful day would forever be etched in their minds. Years later, Emily, inspired by her father and their shared experience, became a marine biologist herself. 
she returned to Azure Bay, dedicating her life to studying sharks and advocating for their conservation. Through her efforts, the town established a marine sanctuary, ensuring that future generations could experience the wonders of the bay safely. The story of the Thompson's encounter with the sharks became a legend in Azure Bay. It served as a reminder of the unpredictable nature of the sea and the importance of respecting its inhabitants. But above all, it was a testament to the indomitable human spirit and the bonds of family. And so, as the sun set on the horizon, casting a golden glow over the tranquil waters of Azure Bay, the legacy of the Thompson family lived on, a beacon of hope and unity in the face of adversity. In the coastal town of Mariner's Haven, where the rugged cliffs met the vast Pacific Ocean, Dr. Vivian Sterling, a renowned marine biologist and fearless documentary filmmaker, prepared for an expedition that would plunge her into the heart of a chilling wonder. Accompanied by her supportive family, her husband, Captain Alexander Sterling, and their adventurous daughter, Amelia, they set sail on the Abyss Explorer, a vessel that would carry them into the depths of the untamed ocean. The year was 2012, and the Sterling family had chosen the picturesque Mariner's Haven for their groundbreaking documentary on sharks. The small town, known for its pristine beaches and unique marine life, provided the perfect backdrop for their exploration. Armed with cutting-edge diving gear and state-of-the-art filming equipment, Dr. Sterling embarked on a solo dive into the abyss while her family watched from the boat's safety. Mariner's Haven had its beauty with its history steeped in maritime lore and the wonder that lay beneath its waves. With an unquenchable thirst for knowledge, Dr. Sterling descended into the ocean's depths, capturing the mesmerizing underwater world on film. The dive started smoothly with Dr. Sterling navigating the depths with expertise. She marveled at the diverse marine life showcasing the ocean's wonders. However, the tranquility was about to be shattered. In the depths of the abyss, a shadowy figure emerged, the ominous silhouette of a great white shark. Unbeknownst to Dr. Sterling, she had ventured into the territory of a particularly territorial and aggressive predator. The great white circled as she focused on her shots, sensing an intruder in its domain. Suddenly, with a burst of speed, the shark lunged towards Dr. Sterling, catching her off guard. The attack was swift and brutal, leaving her in shock and battling for her life as she fended off the relentless predator. Despite her best efforts, the shark's sudden attack left Dr. Sterling disoriented and injured, her once steady movements now impeded by the pain coursing through her body. In a desperate struggle for survival, she activated an emergency buoyancy device attached to her diving suit, propelling herself toward the surface with a burst of compressed air. The ascent, however, was agonizing, as each movement sent waves of pain through her wounded limbs. Gasping for breath, Dr. Sterling emerged from the depths, her face etched with determination and distress. Her husband, Captain Alexander, rushed to her aid, hauling her aboard with a mix of relief and concern. The encounter with the great white shark had taken a toll, physically and emotionally, pushing Dr. Sterling to the brink. As she lay on the deck, battered and bruised, the realization of the untamed and unpredictable nature of the ocean weighed heavily on her, fueling her resolve to comprehend the mysteries that lurked beneath its surface. In the aftermath of the harrowing encounter, Dr. Sterling faced a personal conflict. Grappling with the trauma of the attack and a determination to understand the untamed nature of the great white shark. Supported by her family, she vowed to return to the ocean depths, capture the elusive footage that had eluded her, and face the fearsome predator again. Dr. Sterling relentlessly pursued an understanding of white shark species, seeking the guidance of fellow marine biologists and shark experts. As she recuperated, the incident explored the complexities of nature and the fine line between fascination and danger. The incident was a poignant reflection on the wonders and dangers that lay beneath the abyss, forever untamed and unfathomable. As Dr. Sterling emerged from the depths with a newfound respect for the untamed forces of the ocean and a deeper bond with her family, united by the shared ordeal of the abyss. Embarking on a vacation is often a thrilling prospect, but for 22-year-old Michelle Roy, it was a mixture of excitement and trepidation. As an avid snorkeling lover, 
the allure of exploring the underwater world held an irresistible charm. However, Michelle's fear of the dangers lurking beneath the water's surface kept her from fully indulging in her passion in America. With the opportunity to travel alongside her parents, Michelle saw a chance to combine family bonding with her deep-seated desire for adventure. A meticulous planner, she embarked on a comprehensive research journey to identify the safest and most breathtaking destination for their family vacation. Michelle's investigation led her to the azure beauty of the Bahamas. The archipelago's turquoise waters, teeming with vibrant marine life, promise an enchanting experience for any snorkeling enthusiast. Her persuasive skills matched her passion, and the Bahamas quickly became her destination of choice. Roy, 58, his wife Laura, Michelle, and her twin brother Michael boarded a flight from Las Vegas to the Bahamas, eager to immerse themselves in the pleasures the turquoise waters and pristine beaches had to offer. Upon arriving and settling into their lodge, their Bahamian adventure began with an enthusiasm that matched their anticipation. Arriving in the Bahamas, the anticipation in the air was palpable. With the Caribbean Sea stretching out around it, the Bahamas is a veritable haven for water enthusiasts. Its crystal clear waters promise a paradise for swimming, scuba diving, and snorkeling. Their first port of call was a local restaurant where they indulged in the native delicacies the island nation had to offer. The flavors of the Bahamas danced on their taste buds, a compelling precursor to the aquatic wonders that awaited them. As the sun hung high in the sky, the family felt an irresistible pull toward the crystalline water surrounding them. However, Roy, the patriarch, suggested they spend their first day resting at the hotel and reserve their grand aquatic adventures for the following day. The next day's dawn found Michelle and her twin brother Michael bubbling over with excitement. Having prepared their snorkeling gear, the duo quickly gathered their equipment and went to the beach. The family's adventures were far from over. With a sense of exhilaration, they embarked on a boat excursion to the nearby island of Nassau. Laughter and camaraderie filled the air as they joined other tourists on the boat. Arriving at Nassau, they were greeted by the island's charm, where locals and tourists converged to share in its delights. In the company of fellow travelers, they indulged in a mini picnic that the locals had organized. For Michelle, the promise of adventure beneath the turquoise surface was irresistible. The day's excitement had reached its crescendo as she swiftly finished her meal, eager to don her snorkeling gear and immerse herself in the aquatic wonders that awaited her. Her twin brother Michael was lost in conversation, delaying his preparations. Unperturbed, Michelle ventured into the water alone, the coolness embracing her skin like a lover's touch. The water's gentle embrace lured Michelle further into its depths with each step. The underwater world unfurled before her like an enchanting tapestry its vivid colors and intricate beauty captivating her senses. As she delved deeper, she closed her eyes, allowing the symphony of nature's rhythm to envelop her. Unknown to her, an ominous presence lurked beneath the surface. Three sharks, silent predators of the deep, were closing in on the area. Their predatory instincts honed in on the lone swimmer. But Michelle was lost in her reverie, unaware of the imminent danger rapidly approaching. Meanwhile, Roy, seated comfortably on a picnic mat, relished the cool sea breeze that danced through his hair. His gaze shifted toward the water and his heart skipped a beat as he caught sight of the gills gliding ominously through the waves. Panic surged through him, and he urgently called out to Laura, who was equally taken aback. They exchanged concerned glances, knowing that Michelle was in the water, yet completely unaware of the area's lurking dangers. Frantic shouts of Michelle's name pierced the air their urgency echoing over the waves. But Michelle, lost in her underwater reverie, remained oblivious to the desperate calls for her attention. The scene unfolded was a horrifying collision of paradise and peril as the three sharks circled and descended upon her with terrifying precision. Michelle's peaceful aquatic exploration was shattered as the pack of sharks overwhelmed her. She fought valiantly against her attacker's immense strength and ferocity, but the odds were stacked against her. Before others could intervene, the damage was done. Michelle emerged from the water, her body bearing the brutal marks of the vicious attack. Her right arm had been torn from her body, a stark testimony to the shark's formidable power. Bites marred her other arm and both legs, leaving an indelible imprint of the horror that had unfolded beneath the waves. The shore that was once a threshold to paradise had now become the site of tragedy. 
Michelle's lifeless body was carried ashore. The waves now carrying a tale of heartbreak and loss. Rushed to the hospital, every effort was made to save her, but it was too late. Michelle was pronounced dead on arrival. The shock of the loss was like a tidal wave crashing upon her family. Upon hearing the devastating news, Laura fainted, unable to comprehend the swift and agonizing end that had befallen her child. Heavy with grief and disbelief, Roy lamented the cruel twist of fate that had extinguished the light of his daughter's life. Her absence was felt by her family and the island that had become the backdrop of her final moments. In the wake of Michelle's tragic death, the island mourned a loss it had never experienced. The first fatal shark attack had left an indelible mark on the tranquil shores, forever altering the perception of safety that had once enveloped the paradise. Faced with the unbearable weight of grief, Michelle's family made a painful decision. To leave the island that had turned from a haven of adventure to a graveyard of dreams. As Claire and George slipped into their snorkeling gear, the turquoise waters of the Australian beach glistened invitingly beneath them. The coral reef hidden beneath the surface was a world of wonder, teeming with a colorful array of life that awaited their discovery. They were no strangers to this underwater world, having explored its depths many times before, but each time held the promise of something new and exciting. With a sense of anticipation, they descended into the water, their fins slicing through the gentle waves. As they drew closer to the reef, the suspenseful feeling grew. The coral formations towered above them, casting eerie shadows on the sand below. As they swam deeper into the reef, the shadows grew longer and the colors more vibrant. Schools of fish darted past them, their scales flashing in the sunlight, while crabs and lobsters scuttled along the ocean floor, hiding among the rocks. Despite their familiarity with these waters, the sense of anticipation remained strong within them. The reef was a world of mystery and magic, and they knew that with each new dive, there was always the possibility of discovering something they had never seen before. But then, without warning, Clara was wrenched from her reverie by a sudden excruciating pain in her leg. She gasped, struggling to keep her balance as she looked down, only to see the cold, dead eyes of a massive bull shark staring back at her. Its razor-sharp teeth sank deep into her flesh, tearing and ripping as it thrashed back and forth. The world around her seemed to blur as the pain coursed through her body. She could feel her heart racing as the blood gushed from her wounds, staining the water around her in a sickening cloud of red. The shark seemed relentless, its grip unyielding, as if determined to drag her down into the abyssal depths. Panic and terror threatened to overwhelm her, but Clara fought to stay conscious, knowing that her only chance of survival was to stay focused, to stay alive. She struggled against the powerful jaws of the beast, her body writhing and convulsing as she fought for every breath, every heartbeat. The world had turned into a nightmare, a surreal and terrifying landscape of pain and terror. As the seconds ticked by, Clara's strength began to fade, and she knew that she was fighting a losing battle. But still, she fought on, determined to survive, to live another day, no matter what the cost. A blood-curdling scream escaped Clara's lips as the jaws of the bull shark clamped down on her leg, its teeth sinking deeper into her flesh with every passing second. The pain was unbearable a searing agony that consumed her entire being. She felt as though she was being torn apart, her body racked with spasms of pain. But even as the shark thrashed around, trying to drag her deeper into the water, Clara felt a strong hand grab her and pull her away. It was George, reacting with lightning speed, his muscles bulging with the effort of hauling her to safety. His grip was iron, his determination unshakable, as he battled against the brute force of the shark. The ocean was in turmoil as the predator and prey battled fiercely in a maelstrom of foam and bubbles. The deafening sound of waves crashing was overshadowed by the thrashing of the shark's tail as it relentlessly pursued Clara and George. Clara felt the rough abrasive texture of the shark's skin scrape against her leg, sending shivers of terror down her spine. 
The jaws of the monstrous creature clamped down with a force that threatened to break her bones as she felt the warmth of her own blood spilling into the water. As Clara's vision began to blur and her strength started to wane, she thought it was the end. But then, she felt George's grip tighten around her and his muscles tensed with a sudden burst of energy. He pulled her away from the jaws of death and they hurtled towards the surface as if escaping from the depths of hell itself. Gasping for air, Claire broke through the surface, her chest heaving as she gulped in a great lungful of salty air. She looked around frantically, expecting to see the shark's fin closing in on them at any moment. But to her relief, there was only the sun-drenched sky and the gentle lapping of waves against the shore. It was a narrow escape, but they had survived. And as they lay on the sand, exhausted and shaken, Clara knew that she owed her life to George's bravery and quick thinking. Clara and George had narrowly escaped with their lives, but the terror of the attack would haunt them forever. From that day on, they never went into the water without a healthy dose of caution, knowing that danger could be lurking just beneath the surface, waiting to strike. From the sun-kissed shores of Adelaide, Australia, emerged a young prodigy named Harry, whose journey with the waves began at the tender age of 10. Encouraged by his supportive parents, mainly his father Barth, Harry's innate talent for surfing found its first canvas in the city, renowned for its beaches and vibrant surf culture. Enrolled in a prestigious surfing school in Adelaide, Harry quickly became a standout student, his passion for riding the waves evident from the outset. His nimble maneuvers and fearless approach to the ocean's challenges earned him admiration from peers and instructors. However, what set Harry apart was the invaluable mentorship he received from his father, Barth, an expert surfer in his own right. The duo formed a dynamic surfing team, frequently training at artificial surf pools in the area. The consistent practice and Barth's wealth of experience became the crucible in which Harry's skills were forged. The artificial surf pools allowed them to refine their techniques and experiment with new moves, creating a synergy between father and son that propelled Harry's abilities to heights. Beyond the confines of artificial waves, Harry and Barth occasionally ventured to the pristine beaches of Adelaide. Here, amidst the vast expanse of the ocean, Harry honed his skills in the unpredictable and natural elements, solidifying his mastery of the art of surfing. The connection between father and son extended beyond mentorship. It evolved into a friendly yet fierce competition that spurred them to push their limits each time they rode the waves together. As the years passed, Harry's prowess in surfing reached remarkable heights. Competing in various surfing competitions, he accumulated a collection of medals. However, the defining moment in Harry's surfing odyssey unfolded with Barth on a fateful day at the beach. This day would forever alter the narrative of his untamed connection with the waves. They arrived at the familiar beach in Barth's pickup truck, laden with surfboards, wetsuits, and the unmistakable vibe of anticipation that accompanied their surfing adventures. The beach, a familiar stage for their friendly competitions, became the backdrop for a day etched in tragedy. The pair, equipped with gears and skateboards, embraced the surf with exhilarating freestyle moves, their laughter harmonizing with the rhythmic crash of waves against the shore. As the day unfolded, the father-son duo engaged in customary racing, a tradition that had fueled Harry's competitive spirit and constant improvement. The races, a manifestation of their shared love for the sport, had become a testament to the unique bond forged in the pursuit of conquering the waves. In their final round, Harry emerged victorious, the taste of triumph sweetened by the realization that he had surpassed his father in that particular race. Barth, acknowledging the inevitable passage of time and the physical toll of the exhilarating sport, gracefully conceded, expressing his fatigue. The air was filled with contented exhaustion, the satisfaction of a day well spent on the waves. Barth returned to the shore while Harry stayed in the water freestyling. Amid his freestyling, Harry's joyful dance with the waves turned dark as a shadow emerged from the depths. Without warning, a bull shark, its predatory instincts in full force, lunged at him. The sudden attack caught Harry off guard, 
and the ferocious teeth of the shark lacerated his body, sending shockwaves of pain through him. As the excruciating ordeal unfolded, Harry's automatic response was a loud, desperate yell that cut through the serenity of the ocean. The chilling sound reached his father Barth, who was on the shore and alerted other seagoers to the unfolding crisis. Panic set in among those enjoying the beach, transforming the sunny haven into a scene of distress. Barth leaped into the water without hesitation, fueled by the primal instinct to protect his son. The frantic seagoers, recognizing the situation's urgency, sprang into action. Some rushed to alert the guards stationed at the beach, knowing that swift intervention was crucial to Harry's survival. As the shark continued its relentless assault, Barth swam towards the horrifying spectacle, driven by a father's determination to rescue his son. Armed with experience and a sense of duty, the lifeguards swiftly joined the unfolding rescue effort. Together, they mounted a boat, navigating the turbulent waters in pursuit of the shark that still had Harry in its grip. The adrenaline-fueled pursuit unfolded on the water's surface as Barth and the lifeguards closed the distance between them and the predator. With the boat closing in on the shark, one of the lifeguards carefully aimed a dart gun, a weapon chosen for its efficacy without further endangering Harry. The lifeguard squeezed the trigger in a moment of precision and timing, sending a dart hurtling toward the bull shark. The sharp sting of the dart penetrated the shark's tough skin, causing it intense pain. In response, the shark released its grip on Harry, the sudden relief evident in the young surfer's anguished cries. The lifeguard and Barth wasted no time, swiftly pulling Harry into the boat's safety. The adrenaline-fueled rescue mission had succeeded against the relentless force of the ocean's predator. As the boat raced back to the shore, the seagoers breathed a sigh of relief, their attention shifting from panic to gratitude. The boat cut through the waves, racing against time to bring Harry to safety. As the vessel stopped, Barth and the guards strained to haul Harry on board. The struggle, marked by the absence of assurance from Harry, painted a grim picture. His injuries, evident from the reduced blood flow, spoke of his fierce battle against the shark. Once on the boat, Harry lay motionless, the collective breaths of those present held in anticipation. Barth, his father, and the guards worked urgently, their actions fueled by desperation to save a life slipping away with every passing moment. The boat sped towards the shore, each passing second carrying a weight of uncertainty. Upon reaching the shore, the waiting ambulance became the vessel of hope. Still in the clutches of the dire circumstances, Harry was swiftly transferred to the ambulance. The paramedics worked diligently to stabilize him. The reality of the situation lingered in the air, the silent acknowledgement that this battle may have already been lost. The ambulance raced towards the hospital, the urgency mirrored the anxiety of those who had witnessed the unfolding tragedy. Yet, as the vehicle reached its destination, hope collided with the harsh reality. In the hospital, amidst the sterile halls and bustling medical personnel, Harry was pronounced dead. His parents, grappling with disbelief, initially denied the heartbreaking claim. The grief reverberated through them as they clung to the slender thread of hope that their son might somehow be saved. The hospital bed upon which Harry's lifeless body rested became a haunting tableau of unimaginable loss. His mother, confronted with the undeniable truth, collapsed upon seeing her son's lifeless form. The weight of the tragedy proved too much for her, and she was ushered out for medical attention. The air in the hospital room, heavy with grief, bore witness to the shattered dreams of a family that had savored the joy of Harry's surfing triumphs. The news of Harry's tragic demise spread, casting a pall over the surfing community that had once celebrated his prowess. His surfing club, grappling with the profound loss, described him as a standout talent. Others echoed sentiments of him being a beautiful soul who could light up any room he was in. In the wake of the tragedy, Harry's aunt set up a GoFundMe page to alleviate the financial burden on his grieving parents. The page aimed to raise funds for Harry's funeral service. Within weeks, an outpouring of empathy translated into over $53,000. Amidst the sea of condolences, Harry's parents navigated the treacherous waters of grief. The magnitude of the loss, compounded by the abruptness of the incident, left scars that couldn't be healed by time alone. Rehabilitation sessions became a necessary but arduous path toward acceptance. 
Weeks turned into months as the grieving parents grappled with the harsh reality of life without Harry. The counseling sessions offered with compassionate understanding became a lifeline in their journey toward healing. Yet, the tragedy remained etched in their hearts, an indelible mark that colored the fabric of their existence. Meanwhile, in the aftermath of Harry's demise, the authorities launched a determined effort to address the threat sharks pose on Adelaide beaches. In the coastal town of Wavecrest, the pristine Golden Sands Bay was a surfer's dream. Its consistent waves, azure waters, and sun-kissed beaches drew enthusiasts from all corners. The year was 1998, and the Wavecrest Surfing Championship was the most awaited event of the summer. Among the participants was 16-year-old Mia Bennett, a prodigy in the surfing community. Mia epitomized the surfer spirit with her sun-bleached hair, bronze skin, and fearless demeanor. Her family, comprising her parents, Jake and Lila, and her younger brother, Lucas, were her pillars of strength. They had journeyed with her to Wavecrest, setting up camp close to the beach to root for her. The championship's inaugural day was radiant and promising. The beach hummed with anticipation, the scent of the sea permeating the air and the rhythmic sound of waves setting the backdrop. After her preparatory rituals, Mia waxed her surfboard, gearing up for her performance. As she ventured into the waves, onlookers watched with high expectations. Mia's prowess was well known, and many pegged her as the favorite for the crown. Patiently, she awaited the ideal wave, her focus unwavering. When the opportune wave approached, Mia showcased her expertise, pulling off intricate moves that garnered applause from the shore. However, as her performance neared its climax, an unexpected disturbance in the water disrupted her flow. Emerging from the ocean's depths, a group of sharks attracted by the commotion closed in. The audience stared, frozen in disbelief, as the sharks encircled Mia. In a heart-stopping moment, a shark attacked, its jaws seizing Mia's leg. The sheer force toppled her from her board, and the tranquil waters of Golden Sands Bay were tainted with red. Jake and Lila, gripped by terror, could only watch their daughter's ordeal. Lucas, driven by adrenaline, commandeered a nearby jet ski, speeding towards Mia. The jet ski's noise and motion momentarily confused the sharks, granting Lucas a brief chance to rescue Mia. With Mia injured but safe on the jet ski, Lucas raced back to land. The gathered crowd, recovering from the shock, mobilized. Medical teams attended to Mia while others consoled the distraught Bennett family. The championship was promptly suspended and the beach was evacuated. The festive ambiance of Golden Sands Bay had been overshadowed by the day's grim events, underscoring the unpredictability of nature. As first responders whisked Mia to the nearest hospital, the Bennett family united in their concern, their summer in Wavecrest taking an unforeseen and harrowing turn. The days following the shark attack were a whirlwind for the Bennett family. Mia's condition was stabilized, but the trauma of the incident lingered. The town of Wavecrest, known for its close-knit community, rallied around the family, offering support and prayers for Mia's swift recovery. In the hospital, Mia's fighting spirit shone through. The bite on her leg required surgery and intensive physiotherapy. Every day was a battle, but with her family's unconditional love and support and her own determination, Mia made remarkable progress. Lucas, in particular, spent hours by her side, recounting tales of their childhood adventures and planning future escapades. News of Mia's resilience spread throughout Wavecrest, turning her into a beacon of hope and inspiration. The organizers of the Wavecrest Surfing Championship, recognizing the significance of Mia's journey, decided to reschedule the event in her honor. Two months after the incident, with Mia's leg healed and her spirit unbroken, the championship was announced. The beach was abuzz once more, but the atmosphere was charged with anticipation and respect for Mia's invincible spirit this time. On the day of the competition, Golden Sands Bay was a spectacle of colors and excitement. Flags fluttered in the breeze and the crowd, larger than before, waited with bated breath. The star attraction was Mia, donning a custom-made wetsuit that proudly displayed a shark emblem. Her first foray into the waves was met with thunderous applause. Every eye was on Mia as she danced on the waves, her moves fluid and confident. The memory of the attack seemed to fuel her. Each wave conquered a testament to her resilience. As the competition progressed, 
it became evident that Mia was in her element. Her performance was a blend of skill, grace, and sheer willpower. The other participants, recognizing the gravity of her journey, displayed sportsmanship of the highest order, cheering her on. The final round was a spectacle in itself. Mia chose the biggest wave, riding it with a finesse that left the audience in awe. As she completed her run, the beach erupted in cheers, and many were moved to tears by her triumphant return. When the results were announced, it was no surprise that Mia Bennett was crowned the champion of the Wavecrest Surfing Championship. The trophy in her hand was not just a symbol of her surfing prowess, but a testament to her journey of recovery and determination. The day culminated in a grand celebration. The Bennett family was at the heart of it, their joy and relief evident. Jake and Lila, overwhelmed with pride, hugged their children, their bond stronger than ever. With a twinkle in his eye, Lucas whispered plans for their next adventure, eliciting a chuckle from Mia. Mia stood at the water's edge as the sun set on Golden Sands Bay, her silhouette against the fiery horizon. Once a source of trauma, the waves now whispered promises of endless adventures. The story of Mia Bennett, the girl who faced down a pack of sharks and emerged victorious, became the stuff of legends in Wavecrest. It was a tale of courage, resilience, and the indomitable human spirit, inspiring generations to come. In the picturesque coastal town of Havens Bay, where towering cliffs met the expansive Pacific, Kevin Gilbert, synonymous with marine exploration, yearned for a respite from the demanding rhythms of his career. With an adventurous spirit that had led him to the far reaches of the ocean, Kevin sought solace in a peaceful vacation. In the summer of 2005, the sun bathed the tranquil waters in its warm glow as Kevin prepared for an expedition aboard his meticulously maintained boat, Neptune's Embrace. The locals, intrigued by his reputation and captivated by the allure of the deep sea, gathered at the harbor to witness the departure. A diverse group of colleagues, friends, and marine enthusiasts watched with a mix of excitement and admiration as Kevin donned his diving gear. The air was thick with anticipation, and a collective sense of adventure hung in the coastal breeze. With a promise to return soon, Kevin descended into the abyss, leaving the onlookers with waves of excitement and a shared sense of exploration. As Kevin explored the mesmerizing underwater world, his journey took an unexpected turn when he stumbled upon a hidden underwater cave, its entrance obscured by swaying seaweed. The cave beckoned like an ancient mystery, promising undiscovered wonders that fueled Kevin's curiosity. Oblivious to the potential dangers lurking within the depths, he ventured further into the abyss, his heartbeat echoing in the stillness of the deep. Inside the cavern, Kevin's flashlight painted an ethereal picture of the hidden beauty concealed beneath the ocean's surface. Translucent fish danced in the play of light, and vibrant corals adorned the cave walls like precious jewels. However, the serenity of the underwater sanctuary was abruptly shattered as swift and stealthy shadows moved in the periphery. Unbeknownst to Kevin, the cave served as a sanctuary for a territorial species of sharks that had eluded human discovery for centuries. Sensing an intruder in their sacred domain, the sharks became a swirling mass of predatory instincts. Kevin, now aware of the encroaching danger, attempted to retreat. Yet guided by relentless aggression, the sharks closed in with primal determination. The underwater currents transformed into a chaotic battleground, where the clash of predator and prey reverberated through the cavern's darkened expanse. One particularly massive shark, its eyes reflecting primal instinct, targeted Kevin with ferocious determination. The ensuing battle reached a heart-stopping intensity, the once serene ocean now a theater of survival. Armed solely with his diving knife, Kevin fought desperately against the razor-sharp teeth and powerful tail of the predatory beast. The struggle unfolded in the shadows, a dance between life and death beneath the waves. Above the surface, the local marine authorities, tuned in to Kevin's distress call, launched into action. Expert navigators and skilled rescuers set course for Neptune's embrace, their vessel slicing through the waves with a purpose. Back in the cave, the sharks, disturbed by the presence of intruders, intensified their predatory instincts. The battle between Kevin and the massive shark reached a fever pitch, 
as the Marine authorities neared the scene. With precision and determination, they skillfully intervened, fending off the sharks and rescuing Kevin from the perilous situation. The underwater battleground slowly gave way to the resounding hum of the approaching rescue vessel. Wide-eyed and silent, onlookers clung to the edge of the harbor, their innocence forever marred by the stark reality of the deep sea. In the aftermath, Kevin, battered but alive, was rushed to the nearest hospital for treatment. The incident left an indelible mark on the collective psyche of the community, a haunting reminder of the unforgiving nature that lurked beneath the seemingly tranquil waves. As Kevin recovered, his mind brimmed with newfound determination. A vow to understand the sharks that had almost claimed his life fueled his commitment to marine research. He pledged to unveil the wonders of the underwater world, aspiring to prevent future tragedies and share his harrowing tale with the world. The story of the incident transcended its initial tragedy, evolving into an epic tale of resilience, exploration, and the enduring power of camaraderie. Kevin's dedication resulted in the establishment of the Gilbert Marine Institute, a research hub that attracted top-tier scientists and researchers. Back in Havens Bay, the coastal town that witnessed the incident and the subsequent journey of resilience, the Gilbert Marine Institute became a beacon of knowledge and conservation. Community outreach programs led by Kevin and other passionate advocates educated locals about the importance of sustainable practices and the interconnectedness of marine life. The Institute's research vessel, now known as Neptune's Quest, replaced the aging Neptune's embrace, symbolizing Kevin's ever-expanding commitment to exploration and understanding. The quest set sail on ambitious expeditions, mapping uncharted territories and unveiling new species previously unknown to science. The story of the incident, once a tale of individual survival, had grown into an intricate narrative of resilience, exploration, and the enduring power of shared purpose. Once a victim of the untamed sea, Kevin had become its protector, his legacy imprinted on the pages of marine conservation history. The ocean that once harbored nightmares now stood as a testament to their unwavering commitment. The untamed depths, once a source of fear, had transformed into a realm of discovery and understanding, a testament to the indomitable human spirit that dared to venture into the unknown, seeking survival and harmony with the vast untamed world beneath the waves. In the quaint coastal town of Eldoria, nestled between long cliffs and the vast expanse of the ocean, lived the Lawrence family Mark, the adventurous father, Sylvia, the nurturing mother, little Ethan, the curious young boy with a heart whole of dreams, and their eccentric Uncle Jasper, a weathered seafarer with tales to tell. One sunny weekend, the Lawrences decided to embark on a family fishing trip aboard their sturdy boat, the Sea Breeze Serenity. The year was 2009 and the promise of a bountiful catch shimmered on the horizon. As the boat cut through the gentle waves, laughter filled the air and the scent of salt water embraced the family. Ethan, filled with excitement, clutched his fishing rod, eager to try his luck in the deep blue. Little did he know that this serene family outing would soon morph into a harrowing experience that would forever etch itself into their memories. The azure waters held a silent predator lurking beneath the surface. Unbeknownst to the Lawrences, a formidable great white shark patrolled these waters, its hunger stirred by the scent of the sea and the promise of an easy meal. As Ethan cast his line into the ocean, the baited hook danced on the water's edge, tempting fate. Unseen by the family, the shark sensed an opportunity. The shark, a shadow in the depths, observed the shimmering fish on the line, its primal instincts urging it forward. Ethan's eyes widened with delight as he felt a mighty tug on his fishing rod. The excitement was contagious, drawing the attention of the entire family. The boat's deck buzzed with anticipation as Ethan wrestled with his catch, unaware of the lurking danger beneath. Suddenly the surface of the water erupted in a frenzy. The shark shot out of the depths with lightning speed, jaws snapping shut around the fish and Ethan's fishing rod. The Lawrence family gasped in horror as the shark's immense strength pulled Ethan toward the edge, threatening to consume him and the prized catch. Mark and Sylvia rushed to their son's aid in a frantic surge of adrenaline. Uncle Jasper, a veteran of the sea, bellowed instructions, his weathered face etched with concern. 
Mark dove into the water without hesitation, his hands reaching out to grasp Ethan, while Sylvia and Jasper desperately pulled on the fishing line. The struggle between man and beast unfolded beneath the surface. Enraged and hungry, the shark thrashed violently, determined to claim its prize. Fueled by parental instinct, Mark fought against the currents, his body a barrier between the shark and his son. With a burst of determination, Sylvia leaped into the water, joining the struggle to save her family. The sea breeze serenity rocked with the intensity of the ordeal. The once joyous atmosphere was now drowned in fear as the family grappled with the forces of nature. Uncle Jasper devised a daring plan. Armed with a harpoon, he descended into the water, confronting Poseidon head-on. The battle of survival raged beneath the surface, each member of the Lawrence family playing their part in this maritime drama. In a pivotal moment, the shark relinquished its hold on the fishing rod, retreating into the depths. Mark, Sylvia, and Ethan resurfaced, their breaths ragged, faces marked by the ordeal. Uncle Jasper, a hero of the sea, emerged victorious, his harpoon raised in triumph. Back on the sea breeze serenity, the Lawrence family, battered but alive, clung to each other, the taste of victory mingling with the salt on their lips. Initially filled with joy, the fishing trip had become an unforgettable test of resilience and familial bonds. As the family sailed back to the safety of Eldoria's harbor, the Lawrence family faced the daunting task of attending to Ethan's injuries. An air of urgency and concern replaced the once jovial atmosphere on board. Mark, a beacon of strength, cradled Ethan in his arms, assessing the extent of the trauma wrought by the harrowing encounter. Uncle Jasper, still clutching the victorious harpoon, shifted seamlessly from the role of a maritime warrior to that of a seasoned medic. With weathered hands and a calm demeanor, he directed Sylvia to gather supplies from the boat's first aid kit. The gentle rocking of the boat mirrored the ebb and flow of the family's emotions as they grappled with the aftermath of their ordeal. As the Lawrence family huddled around Ethan, the rhythmic clapping of the waves served as a backdrop to their collective efforts. Sylvia, a nurturing force, skillfully cleaned and dressed Ethan's wounds with a mother's touch, her movements deliberate and soothing. With a wealth of maritime wisdom, Uncle Jasper offered insights into treating injuries sustained in the unpredictable dance with the predator. Still bearing the physical toll of the struggle, Mark maintained a stoic demeanor, masking his concern for his son. Though visibly shaken, little Ethan found solace in the warmth of his family's care. The first aid administered on board the boat became a pivotal moment, a bridge between the untamed encounter and the return to the shores of Eldoria. The Lawrence family, eternally connected by the threads of survival, would forever be the guardians of their untamed story, a narrative of resilience, courage, and the unpredictable dance between man and the wild. The Lawrence family reveled in the simplicity of the moment. The gentle hum of the boat's engine melded with the laughter echoing across the open sea. The sun, a radiant orb, cast a golden glow over the water as if nature endorsed their maritime adventure. As the boat glided into the Eldoria Harbor, the Lawrence family, bonded by the shared triumph and tribulation, disembarked with Ethan held protectively in Mark's arms. Eldoria, with its cliffs standing sentinel, welcomed the survivors back to solid ground. The town's medical facilities became the next chapter in Ethan's journey to recovery. The local doctor, a familiar face in Eldoria, continued the meticulous work that had begun on the boat. The Lawrence family, still echoing the tales of their maritime odyssey, surrounded Ethan in a circle of support. The first aid administered in the aftermath of the shark's ambush not only tended to physical wounds, but also became a symbolic gesture of familial resilience. Eldoria, with its cobblestone streets and salty breeze, bore witness to the Lawrence family's indomitable spirit as they faced the untamed, weathered the storm, and emerged stronger on the other side. The ocean, serene and beautiful, held both wonder and danger. The untamed depths had revealed their wonders, and the Lawrences, forever changed, carried the weight of that fateful encounter. In the aftermath, the Lawrence family became local legends. Their tale is passed down as a cautionary yet inspiring story. Eldoria, a town bound to the sea, would forever remember the day when the untamed ocean unleashed its fury and a family stood united against the jaws of peril. 
Maria Otto had spent a lifetime beneath the waves, seeking solace and tranquility in the world beneath the shimmering surface. With an impressive tally of over 400 dives under her belt, this 73-year-old German scuba diver had long forged a unique connection with the marine realm, finding comfort and companionship in the company of oceanic creatures. However, on a fateful day in June 1997, her journey into the deep would forever be etched in her memory. For Maria, sharks were more than just apex predators. They were her serene companions beneath the waves. Deeply respecting these majestic creatures, she navigated the waters with awe, confident that sharks were an integral part of the ocean's delicate ecosystem. This understanding guided her through countless dives, allowing her to experience the world beneath the surface with a sense of wonder and connection. However, June 1997 would be a turning point in Maria's relationship with the ocean's most fearsome inhabitants. Traveling to Hawaii, she had a noble mission to share her wealth of experience with a new generation of divers, instructing them on the art and science of diving. The setting was a controlled swimming pool environment where young divers could learn the ropes of scuba diving before venturing into the open ocean. Yet, as she spent her days guiding and teaching, Maria undeniably yearned to embrace the open, natural waters surrounding the beautiful Hawaiian islands. Her heart longed to experience the unfiltered beauty of the ocean, to swim amongst the vibrant coral reefs and the creatures that called them home. And so, when her instruction duties ended, she seized the opportunity to embark on a diving adventure that would soon become unforgettable. Before Maria arrived at the water's edge, a group of adventurous tourists, eager to interact with the ocean's most fearsome residents, embarked on a boat excursion and began feeding sharks. As she ventured into the water with her coach and American acquaintances on board, the excitement of exploration mingled with the serenity of the ocean's embrace. Unbeknownst to her, the waters had been stirred by the reckless actions of the tourists feeding sharks transforming the tranquil seas into a theater of heightened activity. Majestic and fearsome, sharks roamed the depths, their presence a stark reminder of the ocean's raw power. Emerging from a dive and relishing the gentle caress of the waves, Maria's world shifted instantly. The serenity was shattered as a sudden force gripped her leg. Her tranquil swim transformed into a harrowing dance with danger. In that visceral moment, the boundaries between the human realm and the untamed world dissolved and Maria found herself locked in a battle for survival with a creature that had mistaken her for prey. The crew on board quickly rushed towards her and helped her to free herself from the shark's lethal grip. But it wasn't an easy task. The shark was punched several times in its nose and eyes till it loosened its grip, and Maria was pulled up. Despite the ferocity of the encounter, Maria harbored no resentment toward the shark. She understood that the incident resulted from the shark's instinctive pursuit of sustenance, a case of mistaken identity in the complex dance of survival. Blood stained the water, and fear gripped her heart. Yet beneath it all lay a deep respect for the ocean's inhabitants, acknowledging their rightful place in the ecosystem she had come to love. As the boat's crew administered crucial first aid and the echoes of the incident lingered, first responders rushed her to a hospital. In Hawaii, a place known for its beauty and serenity, the gravity of the situation became evident. The medical team assessed the situation and a sobering decision was made, amputating her leg. The surgeon expressed concern over potential infections and decided that saving her leg might pose a greater risk to her well-being. Despite the enormity of the decision, Maria faced it with remarkable courage and understanding. She agreed to the amputation respecting the doctor's expertise and acknowledging that her life's course was irrevocably altered. It was a choice that marked a turning point in her journey, a tangible embodiment of her determination to persevere despite the challenges ahead. In the wake of the life-altering event, a community rallied around Maria, demonstrating the power of compassion and support. A friend initiated a GoFundMe campaign to alleviate the weight of mounting medical expenses. The response was overwhelming, with contributions pouring in from near and far, a testament to Maria's profound impact on those who had crossed paths with her. Beyond her role as a skilled diver and a talented photographer, Maria became a symbol of fearlessness and kindness. Her journey transcended the realms of her underwater exploits, transforming her into a beacon of inspiration for individuals navigating their trials. 
The incident may have shifted the trajectory of her life, but her spirit remained undaunted, illuminating the path for others to find strength in the face of adversity. In the tranquil haven of Crest Haven, where the cliffs stoically face the endless expanse of the sea, Emily Anderson, driven by an insatiable thirst for adventure, silently slipped away from the comforting embrace of her family. With a note left behind, expressing only the desire to explore the boundless beauty of the coastline, she set sail on a solo odyssey, her sailboat dancing upon the undulating waves. The year was 2010, and Crest Haven resonated with a harmonious blend of modernity and the timeless cadence of nature. As Emily's sailboat glided gracefully through the azure waters, her surroundings painted in hues of serenity, she reveled in the freedom of exploration. Unbeknownst to her, beneath the crystalline waves lurked a colossal shark, a primeval force that would soon rupture the tranquility of her solitary journey. Initially a tapestry of peace, the sea transformed into an unpredictable realm of danger as the colossal shark, drawn by the vibrations of her presence, circled Emily's small sailboat. In a sudden and ferocious attack, the sea erupted into chaos. The colossal shark, a behemoth from the ocean's ancient past, lunged at Emily's vessel with primal intent. Its razor-sharp teeth tore through the hull, leaving Emily defenseless against the relentless power of nature. During the struggle, Emily fought desperately to fend off the colossal predator. The once calm sea became a turbulent battlefield, her screams echoing across the waves as she grappled with the imminent threat to her life. Emily fought a desperate battle for survival. The once tranquil sea had become a turbulent battlefield, and with each passing moment, Emily's instincts kicked in with fierce tenacity. Gripped by fear and adrenaline, she summoned all her strength and resourcefulness to thwart the relentless onslaught. Driven by a primal instinct to protect herself, she seized any available objects to fend off the colossal predator. With a determination fueled by sheer survival, she wielded whatever she could lay her hands on. A boat hook, a makeshift barrier fashioned from spare materials on the sailboat. Anything to create a barrier between herself and the shark's razor-sharp teeth. In the face of impending peril, Emily's ingenuity and resilience came to the forefront as she navigated the precarious space between life and the ferocious jaws of the ancient force that had disrupted her solitary adventure. Once a canvas of serenity, the sea bore witness to this battle of survival, where the indomitable spirit of a lone adventurer clashed with the primal might of an apex predator lurking beneath the waves. Stained with the crimson hue of her wounds, it bore witness to the ferocity of the encounter, an unpredictable dance between a lone adventurer and the untamed forces that govern the depths. Back on the shores of Crest Haven, Emily's family discovered her note and grew increasingly concerned as the hours passed without her return. Sensing an urgency, they set out to find her, guided by the haunting echoes of her cries for help carried by the wind. The undulating waves led them to the tumultuous waters where Emily's sailboat struggled against the aftermath of the shark's attack. Panic seized the Andersons as they witnessed the harrowing scene unfold. Emily's father, Robert Anderson, a stoic patriarch, reached for the radio, a lifeline that connected them to the external world. Urgent pleas for assistance echoed through the airwaves, interweaving with the anguished cries of a family teetering on the precipice of tragedy. Responding to the distress call, a rescue team was galvanized into action, racing against the relentless clock to reach the battleground where humanity and the ancient force of the ocean collided. The colossal shark, continuing its circling dance around Emily's now damaged sailboat, remained an imposing adversary, an embodiment of nature's unyielding power. As the rescue team's vessel sliced through the waves, Crest Haven became a theater of a macabre spectacle. The colossal shark, a living relic of primordial power, engaged in a primal dance with the determined rescuers. The clash of harpoons and scales resonated, creating a symphony of human determination and nature's resilience in the maritime battleground. Despite Emily's tenacious spirit, the shark's attack had left her with severe wounds. The once tranquil sea turned into a frenetic battlefield, her small sailboat caught in the jaws of nature's relentless power. The shark, driven by primal instincts, circled her vessel, its colossal presence a stark reminder of the unpredictable forces that governed the depths. The battle waged on, 
Emily's family watching helplessly from the shoreline as the sea transformed into a pool of blood. Time slipped away as they clung to a dwindling hope. The colossal shark, a manifestation of untamed ferocity, eventually succumbed to the relentless assault of harpoons. Yet the victory proved hollow, the sea's storm having already claimed its toll. Emily, caught in the crossfire of nature's wrath and her family's desperate search, clung to life with resilience that defied the odds. As the tumultuous sea echoed with the aftermath of the shark's attack, Eleanor, Emily's mother, stood by her daughter's side, her eyes reflecting a mixture of fear and determination. With the rescue team subduing the shark, Michael, Emily's older brother, played a crucial role in providing emotional support to the distraught family. Meanwhile, Sophia, the youngest in the family, clung to the hope that their collective strength would see them through this ordeal. Together, they witnessed the unfolding chaos, their familial bonds tested by the merciless sea. The tumultuous events marked a turning point in the story, propelling the Andersons into a complex terrain of healing. As Emily's recovery progressed, the once vibrant vacation home transformed into a sanctuary of hope. Laughter, though tinged with the echoes of trauma, filled the air as the family, bound by love and resilience, visited Emily daily in the hospital. Emily's mother, who had faced the harrowing specter of nearly losing her daughter, now stood vigil by her bedside. The room, adorned with cards and well wishes from the community, became a testament to the indomitable spirit of a young woman who had defied the jaws of death. Once veiled in sorrow, Eleanor found solace in her daughter's slow but steady recovery. Her family supported her and organized a different gathering to celebrate life and resilience. Friends and neighbors, touched by the miraculous survival, expressed their relief and joy. The once heavy air of grief began to lift, replaced by a collective exhalation of gratitude for Emily's tenacity in the face of nature's ferocity. Dr. Isabella Turner, a marine biologist and friend of the family, became a beacon of understanding and compassion. Collaborating with medical experts, she studied Emily's case, unraveling the intricacies of the shark's behavior and the extraordinary circumstances that led to Emily's survival. The story, which had begun in tragedy, now unfolded as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the intricate dance between life and the untamed forces of nature. Emily's recovery became a symbol of hope for Crest Haven and beyond, her journey inspiring her community and reaching far beyond the confines of the town. As Emily's recovery progressed, the Anderson home transformed once again. Laughter, though tinged with the echoes of trauma, filled the air. The family, their bond strengthened by adversity, navigated the delicate balance between remembrance and renewal. The once vibrant vacation home, scarred by tragedy, now echoed with the sounds of a family reclaiming joy and life. Crest Haven witnessed a unique chapter in its history in the quiet aftermath of the ordeal, a tale of survival and rebirth. The news of Emily's encounter with the colossal shark, now a story of triumph, spread far and wide. Once drawn to the tragedy, the media now focused on the incredible journey of recovery and resilience. The Andersons, once symbols of grief, emerged as ambassadors of hope. Through her research and advocacy, Dr. Isabella Turner highlighted the need for understanding and coexistence with the untamed creatures of the sea. Crest Haven, forever changed by the ebb and flow of life's untamed forces, stood as a testament to the indomitable human spirit and the profound interconnectedness of all living beings. As the seasons cycled through their eternal dance, Emily and her family continued their journey a journey marked by loss, survival, and the enduring echoes of an encounter with a colossal shark. In the quiet moments between tides as the sun dipped below the horizon and the waves whispered their eternal lullaby, Crest Haven stood as a beacon of resilience, a town forever marked by the untamed forces that shaped the tapestry of life. The Andersons, their hearts forever imprinted with the indelible legacy of Emily's survival, navigated the tides of existence with a newfound appreciation for the fragile yet resilient beauty of the untamed world that surrounded them. In the vibrant heart of New York City, where the hustle and bustle of urban life never seem to rest, lies an oasis of tranquility, the beach. On a bright weekend, Charlotte Brown, a spirited 69-year-old New Yorker, 
seized the opportunity to escape the city's chaos and embrace the soothing embrace of the ocean. Accompanied by three dear friends, the beach promised a respite from the daily grind, a chance to relive the carefree days of youth, and to make new memories that would linger long after the waves had receded. Upon arrival, the friends swiftly transformed into beachgoers, donning their vibrant bikinis and grabbing a colorful ball, symbolizing the playful day ahead. The salty breeze swept through their hair as they ventured into the shallow waters, their laughter resonating with the joy of childhood as they tossed the ball to one another. Amidst fits of giggles and splashes, the ocean became the backdrop to their joyous escapade. The friends, a symphony of youthful spirit and seasoned wisdom, reveled in each other's company, allowing the waves to wash away the world's worries. Yet, as the game's enthusiasm waned, two friends decided to retreat to the sun-kissed sands, seeking the comfort of beach chairs to watch the waves dance. Undeterred by fatigue, Charlotte and her remaining companion remained in the water, the cool embrace of the ocean soothing their spirits. The rhythmic waves became their companions, a reminder of the ever-flowing passage of time. The bond between friends, formed through shared memories and experiences, remained as strong as ever, unfazed by the years that had passed. For women, the act of being together is often synonymous with the sharing of stories and the warmth of conversation. And so, amidst the gentle ebb and flow of the waves, Charlotte and her friend began to talk. Their voices, carried by the ocean breeze, danced across the water as they recounted workdays from years gone by. The tales flowed seamlessly, vividly depicting a different era, filled with ambitions, challenges, and triumphs. The stories of yesteryears unraveled like a cherished tapestry, each thread weaving into the fabric of their friendship. Laughter punctuated their reminiscences, a testament to the resilience of their bond that had endured the tests of time. The tranquil day at the beach took an unexpected turn when fate intervened in the most chilling ways. Suddenly, a force jolted Charlotte's left leg, toppling her backward into the water. The world spun as a small tiger shark, its presence unbeknownst to her just moments earlier, clamped onto her left leg with relentless determination. The piercing pain gave way to a primal scream, a desperate cry that pierced the air and sent ripples of panic through her friends. Reacting with a blend of fear and determination, the friend closest to her sprang into action. The swift and instinctive response distracted the shark, diverting its attention long enough for Charlotte to escape its grip. The struggle in the water was fierce, a testament to the raw power of survival that surged through her veins. But Charlotte was not alone in her fight. Lifeguards, ever vigilant, rushed into the water to her rescue. Their arrival was a lifeline, a beacon of hope in a moment of chaos. Swiftly and skillfully, they whisked her to safety. The pain was excruciating as they carried her to the shore. The shark's grip had left a trail of destruction in its wake. The ordeal was far from over. Police officers on the scene ensure her immediate well-being. A tourniquet was applied to her leg, a desperate measure to stem the blood flow. In moments, the once idyllic beach had become a stage for a battle against time, as the forces of life and death waged their relentless struggle. The paramedics arrived swiftly. Their expertise and dedication was shown in their every move. Charlotte was rushed to a nearby hospital. The severity of her injuries was evident from the moment she arrived. The severe laceration to her rear left thigh area was wide. In the sterile confines of the hospital, doctors worked tirelessly to stabilize her. Their efforts focused on saving a life that had been hanging in the balance just moments before. Hours stretched into an eternity as medical professionals fought with determination and skill to piece Charlotte back together. As the hours turned into days, the tide of Charlotte's fate shifted. The efforts of the doctors, the support of her friends and family, and her unyielding spirit came together to turn the tide in her favor. Slowly but surely, her condition stabilized, the storm of chaos giving way to a fragile calm. The ordeal had left its mark, a scar on her leg that bore witness to the battle she had waged against the forces of nature. In the aftermath of the attack, the authorities swiftly closed the beach to swimming and surfing, a precaution to prevent further encounters with the unseen predators that lurked beneath the waves. Her body weakened as Charlotte emerged from the hospital, but her spirit was undaunted, the world looked different. Though she now limped due to the attack, her energy and determination remained unwavering. 
Charlotte had been given a second chance at life, a gift she did not take for granted. She carried on with her life, finding solace in the everyday moments. Melissa's colleagues at the marketing firm had often wondered if she was a machine. Her unparalleled work ethic, unrelenting passion, and unwavering commitment had earned her the reputation of being the hardest worker in the company. Her persistence and determination had finally paid off when she received a promotion, but it was not enough to keep her from feeling burnout. As the hustle and bustle of the city began to take its toll on her, Melissa craved an escape to a place where she could find solace and rejuvenation. She decided to take her whole family to the island of Maui in Hawaii, a place known for its idyllic beaches and tranquil waters. The idea of exploring the stunning coastline and indulging in water activities was enough to invigorate her soul. Melissa's family was a diverse and dynamic group, with each member having their own unique traits and personalities. Her parents, who had retired after years of hard work, were a happy couple, enjoying the peace and serenity that life after work provided. Melissa's younger brother, on the other hand, was a self-proclaimed daredevil, always seeking new adventures and taking risks that most would avoid. Her younger sister was the baby of the family, looking up to Melissa as an inspiration and role model. She was eager to follow in her big sister's footsteps, always watching her every move and admiring her accomplishments with an air of awe and wonder. Despite their differences, the family loved and supported each other, ready to face any challenge that came their way. The island of Maui was a tropical haven that welcomed Melissa's family with open arms. The turquoise waters glimmered in the sunlight, and the white sandy beaches stretched for miles, inviting them to explore. The constant murmur of the waves crashing against the shore provided a soothing soundtrack to their adventures, while the soft sand tickled their toes. But beneath the idyllic scenery lay a world of danger, and it was only a matter of time before they would find themselves entangled in its grasp. As the sun began to set, Melissa and her family sat down at a beachside bar to enjoy a drink and soak up the island's ambiance. A friendly local overheard their conversation and offered a suggestion that would change their vacation forever. The local recommended that they explore the Molokini Crater, a dormant undersea volcanic crater. Intrigued, Melissa and her family eagerly inquired for more details about the location. The local described it as a magnificent wonder of nature, with an abundance of marine life and underwater caves waiting to be explored. As the group imagined themselves diving into the clear blue water of the crater, they felt a sense of excitement and apprehension. They had never attempted anything like this before, and the unknown dangers lurking beneath the surface added to the thrill. The idea of venturing into a crater formed by a volcano that had been active in the past made their hearts race. Despite their hesitation, they decided to take the plunge and embark on this new adventure. On the day of the dive, the family was bubbling with excitement as they strapped on their diving gear and jumped into the cool, clear water surrounding Molokini Crater. The vibrant colors of the coral reef below were mesmerizing and the family couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder and awe at the otherworldly beauty before them. Schools of brightly colored fish swam around them, while majestic sea turtles glided gracefully by. The eerie silence of the underwater world only added to the sense of mystery and adventure that Melissa and her family felt. But as they delved deeper into the crater, a feeling of unease began to settle in the pit of their stomachs. However, while swimming, Melissa noticed a group of large shadows lurking in the murky waters. Curious, she used her underwater flashlight to shine a light on the shadows. Melissa was petrified to see a pack of tiger sharks stalking the murky waters. In a panic, Melissa swam to the surface and alerted her whole family. The family were in a frenzy, thrashing relentlessly with their efforts to reach the safety of the waiting boat. The chaos caught the attention of the sharks. The pack of sharks swam towards the commotion. Realizing that there's prey in the water, the predators went on a feeding frenzy. The rest of the family were almost upon the boat, but Melissa was not so lucky. In a matter of seconds, 
she was surrounded and circled around by a pack of hungry tiger sharks. Melissa could see the fins of five sharks circling around her. She tried to swim away as fast as she could, but the sharks were faster. Suddenly, one of the predators lunged at her, biting Melissa's left leg. Melissa screamed in agony as she felt the shark's razor-sharp teeth tear her flesh. The water around them was crimson red with Melissa's blood mixing with the salt water. The smell of the blood in the water crazed the other sharks, who were overcome with their primal instincts and hunger. The other sharks started attacking Melissa, who was helpless against the might of the predatory beast of the sea. As the first shark latched on a Melissa's leg, tossing her around like a rag doll in the water, one shark latched onto Melissa's arm. Suddenly, in a bone-crunching bite, both sharks bit off Melissa's limbs. Melissa couldn't even scream, as another shark bit off her head. The sharks continued their harrowing attack. Some sharks began ripping the other limbs, while one bit on Melissa's torso, dragging her mangled, lifeless body to the depths of the ocean. Melissa's family could only watch in horror as this pack of tiger sharks ripped her apart. The Coast Guard responded to the distress call of the guide, but it was no use. After several days of search, no part of Melissa was found. Her family was left with the emotional scar of watching their beloved Melissa devoured by the primal predators of the sea. In the coastal town of Eldermist, where towering cliffs met the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean. The Valerian research team, led by the renowned marine biologist Draven Valerian, embarked on a journey that would unfold into a chilling incident during the summer of 1989. Draven, characterized by his salt and pepper beard and piercing azure eyes, was accompanied by his dedicated colleagues, Dr. Leo Cadia Stella Nova and Dr. Alistair Nightshade. Seeking a respite from the hustle of city life, the team embraced the picturesque landscape, choosing a cliffside residence that offered both sanctuary and an inadvertent stage for a tragic event that would transcend the boundaries of man and nature. On a warm July morning, the Valerian research vessel set sail into the heart of the great white shark migration route, where the predators roamed in their untamed glory. With a curious glint in his eyes, Draven meticulously collected data while peering over the edge of the research vessel. Unbeknownst to them, a massive great white shark circled the vessel with relentless precision, its predatory instincts heightened by the scent of human presence in the water. As the colossal shadow of the great white shark approached, the air turned heavy with tension. Draven, engrossed in his scientific pursuits, remained unaware of the impending danger. His innocent fascination became the focal point of the shark's predatory instincts. The great white shark lunged in a sudden and merciless strike, jaws snapping shut with bone-chilling force. Chaos erupted on the tranquil research vessel as the shark's immense power breached the ocean's surface, violently pulling Draven beneath the waves. Initially paralyzed with shock, his colleagues sprang into action, desperately trying to locate Draven amid the chaos. Unbeknownst to them, Draven, relying on his profound knowledge of marine life, managed to escape the shark's deadly grasp through a combination of quick thinking and resourcefulness. Using a makeshift underwater tool, he freed himself from the predator's jaws, emerging from the water battered and breathless. The great white shark disappeared into the depths, leaving the researchers to grapple with the enormity of their loss. The relentless predator had almost claimed Draven, but he had miraculously survived, a testament to human resilience amid tragedy. Haunted by the specter of that fateful day, Draven's journey took an unexpected turn. No longer solely driven by scientific curiosity, he became a man on a mission to understand and confront the predatory forces that lurked beneath the waves. His research, now fueled by a personal vendetta, took a dark and determined path. Draven, joined by the resilient Dr. Leo Cadia Stella Nova and Dr. Alistair Nightshade, delved deeper into the ocean's wonders in the following years. Together they unraveled a complex web of ecological imbalances, human encroachment, and the relentless pursuit of survival that defined the great white shark's existence. Each revelation pushed them closer to a shocking truth that would redefine their understanding of the natural world. 
Against the backdrop of Eldermist, a town scarred by tragedy and reluctant to confront the darkness beneath its placid surface, Draven's strained relationships with his colleagues and even himself came to the fore. The untamed forces of nature threatened to consume the very fabric of his being. The researchers embarked on a dangerous expedition to locate and study the elusive Great White Shark responsible for attacking Draven. The treacherous journey tested their resilience, courage, and the boundaries of human understanding. Deep-sea dives, primitive equipment, and heart-stopping encounters with the ocean's apex predator pushed the team to the brink of sanity. Eldermist grappled with the aftermath of tragedy, scientific discovery, and the indomitable spirit of the untamed ocean. Draven, forever scarred by the attack, found solace in the understanding that some wonders were meant to remain untamed. His story echoed through the corridors of time as a testament to the delicate balance between man and nature. As the news of Draven's survival spread, the Valerian research team became a symbol of triumph over adversity. The town of Eldermist, initially reluctant to confront the darkness that lurked beneath its placid surface, began to see the importance of understanding and coexisting with the untamed forces of the ocean. Draven found a new purpose in his research. He became an advocate for marine conservation, tirelessly working to bridge the gap between scientific understanding and public awareness. Dr. Leo Cadia Stellanova and Dr. Alistair Nightshade stood by his side, their collective journey evolving into a beacon of hope for the delicate balance between man and nature. The Valerian team's continued exploration of Elder Mist's marine wonders led to groundbreaking discoveries. They uncovered the interconnectedness of marine ecosystems and the delicate dance between predator and prey. The town, scarred by tragedy, now embraced its role in fostering a sustainable coexistence with the untamed ocean that bordered its shores. Their incident had become a legend in Eldermist, passed down through generations as a cautionary tale and a source of inspiration. The delicate balance between scientific curiosity and respect for the wild forces of nature became a guiding principle for future generations of marine biologists and ocean enthusiasts. In the years that followed, Eldermist transformed into a hub of marine research and conservation. The Valerian Marine Research Institute, established in honor of Draven and his team, became a beacon of knowledge and a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of nature's untamed wonders. As the sun set over the cliffs of Eldermist, casting a warm glow on the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean, the town stood as a living testament to the delicate harmony achieved between man and nature. Draven's survival, once a tale of tragedy and vengeance, had blossomed into a legacy of understanding, coexistence, and the enduring spirit of exploration. After spending most of his life in the rural village of Lockyer Valley in Australia, Sean Henderson faced an unexpected adversary, a severe allergy to farm life. The lush fields, fragrant meadows, and the essence of rural living became a source of discomfort for Sean. Determined to secure a healthier environment for their family, the Hendersons boldly decided to uproot and move to a coastal town south of Australia. The coastal town, with its soothing sea breeze and sandy shores, became the sanctuary the Henderson family yearned for. Sean, alongside his wife Amelia and their three children, discovered a newfound joy in the coastal lifestyle. The family embraced their new surroundings wholeheartedly, reveling in the opportunity to indulge in water activities at every conceivable moment. Weekends became synonymous with family beach outings, where laughter echoed against crashing waves. Sean and Amelia watched their children grow, their bonds strengthening through shared snorkeling adventures and sunny beach days. The move had not only addressed Sean's allergy, but it also transformed their lives into a sunlit tapestry of joy and togetherness. Amelia, seizing the opportunity presented by the coastal town, ventured into entrepreneurship and established a successful grocery business. The locals embraced her grocery store, finding solace in its convenience. The business flourished, adding a layer of fulfillment to the Henderson's dream. On one fateful Saturday, the Henderson family embraced the sun's warmth as they packed their picnic essentials eager for a day of seaside delight. With baskets filled and spirits high, they descended upon the sandy shores, their laughter harmonizing with the rhythmic symphony of crashing waves. 
After a hearty breakfast, Sean and Amelia found a comfortable spot on the beach, a quaint canopy offering shade from the sun's persistent rays. The children, bursting with youthful exuberance, scampered towards the water's edge, their imaginations ignited by the promise of sandcastle kingdoms and playful escapades. As the children gleefully molded sand into architectural wonders, Sean and Amelia settled in, their eyes dancing between their offspring and the captivating waves. The youngest of the trio, still navigating the tender age of five, reveled in the simplicity of building dreams in the soft grains beneath their tiny fingers. Amelia, a woman of resourcefulness and culinary creativity, had a distinct plan for the day. The tempting thought of a dish featuring fresh scallops lingered in her mind. It was a delicacy she had intended to procure from a local market, only to be reminded by the gentle sea breeze that their destination held the potential for a more personal and rewarding harvest. After observing the children's innocent play, Amelia turned to Sean with determination in her eyes. She expressed her intent to venture into the water in pursuit of the elusive scallops, a decision that would weave the day's narrative into an unexpected tale. With a swift change into her swimwear, Amelia approached the water's edge, the cool embrace of the sea calling her name. Before immersing herself in the underwater hunt, she gathered her children close. With a maternal tone laden with caution, she instructed them to remain under the protective shade of the canopy with their father. In the embrace of the sea, Amelia's underwater sojourn bore fruit. Her hands, skilled from years of coastal exploration, retrieved scallops from their secret hideaways. With a triumphant spirit, she resurfaced the gleam of success in her eyes as she cradled the sea's treasures. Suddenly, a menacing presence disrupted the tranquility. A colossal great white shark, a silent predator of the deep, materialized near Amelia. The shark's length is around 20 feet, and its sudden appearance sends shockwaves through the blissful scene. In an unthinkable moment, the shark surged forward, its predatory instincts triggered by forces unknown. Still reveling in the sea's caress, Amelia was trapped in the merciless jaws of the marine behemoth. The horrific reality unfolded as the shark tore her in half, severing her life from the serene canvas of family happiness. The Henderson family, rooted on the shore just 150 yards away, witnessed the gruesome spectacle in paralyzed horror. The air echoed with their screams, a symphony of terror as the once clear waters transformed into a crimson abyss. Equally gripped by fear, other swimmers scrambled frantically to escape the proximity of the ruthless predator. As Sean's anguished cries for his wife pierced the chaotic scene, a wave of onlookers held him back, preventing him from plunging into the dangerous waters. His desperate attempts to free Amelia were thwarted by the collective effort of those around him, who recognized the futility and danger of confronting the monstrous shark. Amidst the chaos, Older onlookers shielded Amelia's children from the ghastly sight before them. Hands moved instinctively to block the traumatic visual that threatened to scar the innocent minds of the young witnesses. The first attack left Amelia lifeless, her head torn off in the ruthless onslaught. As the horror unfolded, rescuers raced against time to reach the scene, the urgency evident in their every move. However, fate seemed determined to withhold any semblance of mercy. By the time help arrived, all that remained of Amelia was a hauntingly headless torso, a grim testament to the savagery of the marine predator. Once a haven of joy, the beach now bore witness to a tragedy that defied belief. As emergency workers grappled with the grim task of retrieving Amelia's remains, the great white shark, undeterred by the human presence, returned to claim its macabre prize. The unrelenting predator devoured what little remained, leaving no trace of the woman who had moments ago reveled in the sea's embrace. The ambulance that had rushed to the scene with hopes of rescuing a life was now tasked with transporting a shattered family to the hospital. Sean, traumatized by the unimaginable loss of his soulmate and the children, scarred by the unforgettable images etched into their young minds, were bound for a rehabilitation facility. Months passed in the cold grip of grief and therapy. The family, grappling with the harsh reality of their irrevocably altered lives, reluctantly accepted their tragic predicament. Yet moving on was an arduous journey, one riddled with sleepless nights and haunting memories. The trauma inflicted by that fateful day cast a shadow over the Hendersons, 
dimming the once bright light of their family unity. Once a place of joy, the beach became a haunting reminder of unspeakable loss. The hollow echoes of tragedy replaced the laughter that once danced on the shore. Despite their efforts to rebuild, the family found solace elusive. The pain of the beach's betrayal and the loss of Amelia lingered as a persistent ache that defied the passage of time. The haunting memory of the ruthless shark had robbed them not only of a beloved wife and mother, but also of the sanctuary they once found in the embrace of the sea. Once a symbol of joy and family togetherness, the beach transformed into a desolate landscape of sorrow. The waves that once whispered tales of happiness now carried the weight of grief too profound to articulate. And so the Henderson family, forever scarred by the ruthless hand of fate, retreated from the shoreline that had once framed their cherished memories. Lagoon's Edge, a coastal village, was a canvas of tranquility and natural beauty in the summer of 2005. The village, with its charming cobblestone pathways and houses adorned in soft pastel hues, was a sanctuary for those seeking solace in nature's lap. The expansive, gleaming lagoon, which seamlessly kissed the sea, was the jewel of this quaint village. Legends whispered of hidden treasures and mystical creatures beneath its azure surface. The Carter family, consisting of Robert Carter, a seasoned journalist, his wife Lydia, a celebrated photographer, and their spirited 12-year-old daughter Sophie, sought a summer of adventure and inspiration at Lagoon's Edge. They nestled into a cozy cottage that offered a panoramic view of the lagoon, hoping the serene environment would spark their creative energies. One sun-drenched morning, the Carters, along with a few intrigued villagers, embarked on a boat expedition to explore the hidden alcoves of the lagoon. Lagoon's Whisper, captained by the seasoned Captain Elias, whose lineage was deeply intertwined with the village's history, sailed smoothly over the gentle waves. With his weathered face and twinkling eyes, Elias recounted stories of pirates, ancient shipwrecks, and the mythical guardians of the lagoon. Sophie's adventurous spirit was captivated by the legend of Mermaid's Cove, a secluded spot celebrated for its crystal-clear waters and rumored to be a favored haunt for mermaids. Elias, his smile filled with knowing, expertly guided the boat toward the cove. Upon reaching Mermaid's Cove, the group was mesmerized by its ethereal beauty and couldn't resist diving into the inviting waters. Sophie, fearless and curious, swam deeper into the cove, enchanted by the vibrant marine life. Suddenly, the tranquility was shattered by the appearance of dark, swift-moving shadows. A pack of sharks encircled Sophie, their piercing eyes locked onto her and their intentions ominously clear. Her heart pounded as she tried to maintain a semblance of calm, floating motionless in the water. Surrounded by the unforgiving depths of the ocean, Sophie found herself in the midst of a heart-stopping moment as a pack of sharks descended upon her. Sensing an opportunity, the powerful predators closed in, their dorsal fins slicing through the water's surface with a sinister grace. Sophie's heart pounded like a drumbeat, her every instinct screaming for her to flee. As she desperately tried to move towards the boat, the sharks moved in closer, their cold black eyes fixed on her. One of them lunged, teeth bared, and Sophie felt the rush of terror course through her veins as the shark's jaws snapped shut just inches from her leg. But before the other sharks could inflict further harm, a pair of saviors emerged from the boat. Captain Elias and Robert, driven by remarkable swiftness and courage, thrust at the attacking sharks with a makeshift spear, repelling them with precise, calculated jabs. The pack of sharks, momentarily thrown off balance by the sudden turn of events, retreated, their hunt disrupted. There was no time to spare in the aftermath of the heart-stopping shark encounter. With Sophie's life hanging in the balance, they acted swiftly rushing her back to the safety of the boat. The adrenaline-fueled race against time continued as they sped toward the shore and called for an emergency medical team. At the hospital, the dedicated medical staff worked tirelessly to stabilize Sophie. She bore the physical scars of the attack, but her spirit remained unbroken. Days turned into weeks as she underwent surgeries and received round-the-clock care. Gradually, with each passing day, Sophie's strength returned. Her indomitable willpower carried her through a challenging recovery, aided by the unwavering support of her family and the ever-present Robert, who refused to leave her side. It was a testament to her resilience that she not only survived the vicious shark attack, 
but also emerged from it stronger and more determined than ever before. As Sophie's health improved, the Carters and their guides couldn't help but reflect on the fateful day. It had been a difficult journey, one that had tested their courage and forged unbreakable bonds. The memory of the shark encounter would forever remain etched in their minds as a testament to the power of human determination and the strength of the human spirit. In the sun-kissed summer of 2005, the picturesque coastal town of Harbor Haven, nestled between rolling hills and the expansive ocean, eagerly anticipated the annual beach volleyball tournament. The event was a radiant tapestry of sunlit days, the sound of waves crashing against the shore, and the palpable excitement that enveloped the community. Cassandra Donovan, a spirited teenager with a cascade of brown curls, stood out among the participants. Her prowess on the sandy courts, a dazzling blend of agility and power, made her a rising star in the local sports scene. As the tournament reached its zenith, Cassandra's team was on the brink of triumph, and the entire town watched in awe. Amid the pulsating energy of the tournament, Cassandra, yearning for a brief respite, ventured towards the azure waters that embraced the sandy shoreline. The sun, casting a golden glow upon the beach, painted the scene with an ethereal beauty. Little did Cassandra know, a massive force stirred beneath the surface, a shark lurking in the fathomless depths. The attack when it came shattered the idyllic ambience. Cassandra's laughter, a joyous melody just moments ago, transformed into a heart-rending scream as a colossal shadow emerged. Initially reveling in the spirited competition, the spectators were thrust into a collective nightmare as the ocean claimed its unsuspecting victim. The beach became a canvas of chaos. Panic swept through the onlookers. Gasps of horror replaced their carefree cheers. The once tranquil waves now harbored a primal struggle as Cassandra fought desperately against the jaws of the lurking predator, a silent dance unfolding beneath the surface. On the shore, chaos reigned. Panic-stricken beachgoers fumbled with phones, calling for help. The urgency of their pleas blending with the distant roars of the ocean. During the turmoil, a group of seasoned divers emerged, a brotherhood forged by the sea's ebb and flow, bound by a duty to protect their community from the ancient menace that lurked in the depths. These divers, weathered by countless tides and acquainted with the unpredictable temperament of the ocean, wasted no time. Synchronized like a well-practiced ballet, their movements became a beacon of hope amidst the turmoil. Armed with nets and unwavering determination, they descended into the watery abyss, the unknown dangers hidden beneath the surface failing to deter their mission. The underwater battle unfolded like a silent opera, the divers confronting a shadow that had haunted these waters for generations. The shark, an embodiment of primal power, fought fiercely against its captors. It was a struggle transcending the physical, a clash of survival instincts echoing through the ancient depths. In a moment that seemed to stretch into eternity, the divers managed to entangle the creature in a web of nets. Victory, however, came at a price. Battered and bruised, Cassandra emerged from the water, a living testament to the relentless struggle beneath the waves. The once joyous beach volleyball tournament now stood in somber silence, the atmosphere heavy with shock and disbelief. On her way to the hospital, Cassandra became a symbol of resilience and the fragility of human existence. The news of the incident had spread through the town, whispers of the harrowing encounter reaching every corner. What was once a joyous event now cast a shadow over Harbor Haven, a collective scar etched into the town's memory. As the chaotic events unfolded on the beach, Cassandra's family, who had been enthusiastic spectators of the tournament, were suddenly thrust into a state of shock and dismay. Witnessing their daughter's harrowing ordeal, they rushed to the water's edge, their faces contorted with fear and disbelief. The shock lingered as Cassandra, entangled in the jaws of the predator, was finally rescued by the courageous divers. With the urgency of a united front, her family accompanied her to the hospital, their steps heavy with concern. In the car, the atmosphere was tense and the sad ride mirrored the town's collective sentiment. The once joyful family outing is now marked by a surreal and unforeseen calamity that left them grappling with the fragility of life. In the hospital room, Cassandra fought not only for her physical recovery, but also for the restoration of the town's spirit. The once quiet community now rallied behind her, 
transforming the hospital into a sanctuary of hope and camaraderie. Days turned into weeks, marked by Cassandra's unwavering determination to reclaim her life. Physical therapy sessions became a testament to her indomitable spirit, a journey that resonated with every resident of Harbor Haven. Once a shadow over the town, the incident became a source of inspiration, a beacon of resilience that united the community in a shared narrative of triumph over adversity. Harbor Haven, known for its serene beauty, found a new identity, a town united by the shared memory of a day when the ocean roared in defiance. Cassandra's return to the beach volleyball scene was not just any sporting event, but a celebration of resilience, a testament to the human spirit's ability to emerge victorious from the silent depths. The once quiet town, forever changed by the incident, became a beacon of strength. Cassandra's story, etched into the annals of Harbor Haven's history, resonated with every resident, young and old. Once a source of fear, the ocean now whispered the tale of a courageous young athlete who faced the shadows and emerged triumphant. The beach volleyball tournament resumed in the aftermath but was no longer just a sporting event. It became an annual reminder of Harbor Haven's resilience, a celebration of unity, and a testament to the indomitable spirit that could rise from the abyss. Once shaken to its core, the town emerged stronger, connected by a story that transcended more and more a story of bravery against the shadows.